Welcome everyone to the MatchNet podcast. <laughs> Shizuka Paling is here with us and we are have just been talking about our uh, what we're going to be talking about here today. And I wanted to have Shizuka here because she has been involved in many, many people's lives. She is one of those people that is always making matches and having conversations and thinking about who can get matched to who, which I, I do not operate in that realm, to be honest. And it's really good to have a balanced perspective. So Shizuka, it's good to have you. How are you? Good. Thank you. Thank you for having me. I'm just, I'm glad to be on the podcast today. So. Currently, you are very pregnant. Is that right? Yes, I am 30, almost 37 weeks. So I was glad I could sneak in this episode before baby comes. But yeah. Yeah, me too. Super glad. Can you just tell us a bit about yourself, background, why you're here? Why do you care about matching and blessing stuff? Yeah. Okay. So for people that don't know me at all, um, yeah, Shizuka Paling. I live now in Minnesota. I'm actually one of the four co-pastors here at Minnesota Family Church. Uh, that was from earlier this year. Um, yeah, I've been, so I've been married, blessed for almost 15 years now in January. I have three kids already, one on the way. And um, I got involved in this space back in 2016. So this is, a yeah, I've been at it for a while. And, uh, you know, disclaimer, you know, I don't have any expertise. I'm not any kind of, you know, like I don't do any studies and things like that. But I, but I just have a lot of experience just from helping different families and different individuals for all these years. And so um, maybe some people also know me as one of the staff for the 24 plus retreats, which um, I'll, I'll kind of go into it a little bit, but um, that's just kind of how my journey started back in 2016. But um, I don't know if you wanted me to go into like, yeah, why? Yeah, why? Yeah. Why do you care about this? Okay. So back in 2016, I remember being, you know, just a good person in my community, just, you know, just a good person. And I was thinking, um, I just had a lot of friends and a lot of people that I knew that were just struggling connecting with people. And this is not like connecting emotionally because I've already started talking to them. It's like they couldn't even get a hold of their family's phone number or they couldn't get a hold of that guy or girl to find out where they're at with this, if they're even available, if they're thinking about matching and stuff. And it was so long and tough for them to do that. And I was thinking, why is it so hard? Like I give me their, I'll find out, I'll find, I'll call the pastor. I'll find out what that family's up to, what that guy's up to and I'll do it. But then I was thinking back, I was thinking, okay, well, I can't just call random families. I'm just a per like, who am I, you know? So then I was thinking, okay, well, may, I probably need to get some kind of credentials or something. So somebody suggested you should be a matching supporter. And I was like, um, okay. So then I did the training, became a matching supporter. And then I felt a lot more freedom to just call people and find out. And um, yeah, I just I just felt like there were so many families that were stuck and it, you know, a lot of missed opportunities because that family didn't read the emails or they didn't pick up their phone at that time or whatever it was, or just out of fear, people didn't contact people because they're like, oh, it's too much work to track them down. So, um, so anyways, yeah, I became a matching supporter and that's when I started helping people. And then it was that winter in December where I became um, my first 24 plus experience and I was on the staff. And since then, been staffing many other retreats I uh, I was trying to calculate I was thinking I was like how many retreats did I done like have I done and, and I think it's probably like 15 or you know something like that but I've done quite a few since then had you know kids since then but yeah I I just think that people need help in this area and I wasn't afraid to you know roll up my sleeves and call those families so yeah I was always grateful to be here to help people yeah got it yeah. So, you know, I was trying to think of, you know, what is it on my heart or like, what is it that I feel is important in this space and from helping a lot of uh, different individuals and families, I think one of the words that literally come up to my, like the forefront is like boldness and being vulnerable. And I think that I know it's a personality thing too. Like I know for me, it's just my personality too, to just be like, okay, maybe it's also, and I always say this, like if you're in your thirties, you get to a point where you like, don't care as much. 
So you're just like, I don't really care what people think about me at this point. It's like, I, I need to know. I, I'm just going to find out. I'll just call them or I'll just, you know, contact them directly. And um, so anyways, but I feel like when it comes to this space of matching and blessing, like the pattern that I'm seeing is uh, successful matchings and blessings. It happens from someone being bold somewhere or someone having to kind of put themselves out there first. And so I want to also, you know, shout out to everyone that's doing that. And, you know, whether you're starting or whether you've been in, in, in the process of this journey for a bit, like I do appreciate people that have made those proactive steps to yeah. put themselves out there. Yeah. What does it look like for people to be stuck and not taking action, not being bold? Can you give us some examples? Yeah, I would say, you know, and, and there's no problem focusing on college and career and things, but I think it's so easy to make a lot of excuses uh, to to just stay busy and just look busy doing a bunch of stuff and putting this on the back burner. And then it creeps up and, you know, you're maybe in your thirties and you're like, oh, maybe I should start thinking about this. And, you know, it's just a little bit. It would be nice if you had a little bit more of a head start earlier. Um, and then, I mean, there's also just some people that I've seen where they're kind of leaning back and they're just waiting for someone to contact them, right? Like, like I'm a good person, but it's like, okay, but if you live in this random town in this random city that like nobody knows about or you don't come to anything because you're focused on school or work or whatever, I, I don't know how people are going to know your name. Like, mm. how are they going to know you exist or that you're available, right? Yeah. So, um, yeah, I think I see some of that. Or there's a lot of different platforms that our faith community provides, and maybe they don't think any of those platforms are for them. I think I see that all also. So I try to always encourage them, like, okay, I get it. Maybe this is not your thing, but what about this one? Or maybe, you know, just being open to trying it. You know, you don't know, you, you'd be surprised. There's a lot of good people in these waters too, you know? Mm. So, yeah. Got it. So there's a shift in priority, especially in those important years in their twenties. So how, how should people go about changing the priorities and shifting it more towards matching and marriage? Um, I mean, I know everyone's different and depending on what they're doing, you know, I just, I just say, you know, if this is something that you're really wanting, like mm. doing just something, you know, whether it's something actual tangible, like physical that you're, okay, I'm going to attend this program or put myself on the website or, you know, but I think just even getting to that headspace of, okay, like I am preparing for something, you know, I'm going to prepare because I do want a family eventually. And whether, you know, we do have many different ways, you know, MatchNet is such a great platform to just kickstart that. Um, or even just thinking about, you know, your, your team of who you'd like on your team to help you when you are ready to start looking. Um, yeah, I mean, yeah, it's all different, right? Every, everyone's situation is so different. So it's like, I, I hate saying, okay, like you have to do it this time. But by this time, if you're not already thinking about it, the ship is sailing and you're mm. kind of off the boat. Like, it's not like that. Mm. There's always um, time, you know, even, yeah, there's always time. Well, I'll, I'll counterbalance that with, with a different approach. Uh, so you're saying that basically taking, doing something, right? Whether you have a team, whether you want to go on a website, join MatchNet, become a matching candidate, take one step in the direction you want to go, right? As you mentioned. And then that's kind of just to get the snowball rolling. And then I think when people take action towards what they want, they start to prioritize that, especially if it's a frequent thing. Like it's if it's a weekly thing that you're doing or even better if it's a daily thing, if there's a daily action that you can do, that's a constant reminder and stimulant to send a signal to your brain and your body that this is an important thing and I want to focus on it. And the tendency is that the things that we do every day tend to be related to work and school and day-to-day -day life. So the first things that we lose focus on tend to be the more abstract or spiritual or long-term uh, goals, like finding a partner, like having a family, because those don't, 
like it's hard to think long term. And so the easier solution is just to think day to day, I have to pay the bills, I have to, you know, work on my essays and things like that, right? But anyways, just to p- counterbalance that that thought, I think that now this doesn't apply to everyone, but but if if somebody is over the age of 24, and this is just my my perception, right? Uh, and experience. If someone is over the age of 24 and they have not thought at all about matching and marriage and finding a partner, I think fundamentally there is something that is off. <laughs> mm. <laughs> and when I say off, I don't mean like you're weird. I just mean that there is something that is a, a mismatch in priority. And the reality is just like you're saying, she is that people want to get married. People want to have a family. It's just that it's not a priority. And I was really uh, shocked by a statistic about uh, birth rates. There is a pr- there is a renowned uh, scientist that studies population collapse. And you, you guys should really look into this. It's really fascinating. Even Elon Musk talks about this. And he says that population collapse is the single most, the greatest threat to humanity because of lowering birth rates, right? And it was, I was listening to this podcast. It's a really lengthy one. And he said one statistic that really was shocking to me. And that is that 80% of people, of women that wanted to have children didn't have children. So in essence, 80% of women that didn't have kids actually wanted to have children. And it wasn't that they were like, oh, I don't want to have kids. It was just that they prioritize other things. And so by the time they were like, okay, I'm ready to have kids, either they didn't have the right partner at the time, or they were missed their, their window, their age window of opportunity to have kids. And so the biological clock, you know, was, a uh, was, was set so they couldn't have kids. So I, I I listened to that and I was like, that's interesting. That's contrary to the the popular thought that it's like, oh, people just don't want to have kids. That's not true, actually, because the stats are true, are 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 evident that people want to have children. It's just that the opportunity is missed because of a shift in priority towards other things, right? So that's just a different perspective. It's like, like you're saying, it's it's a matter of what's important to me. And am I taking steps towards what I believe is, is a, is a priority in my life and what I really want, you know? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, I wanted to also add, I mean, I know just from going to like uh, being staff on 24 plus retreats, I mean, and, and I know there's going to be some women that are listening to this or men that are listening to this, that are, that are saying, no, like I've been at this game for a long time. I want this so bad, you know? And it actually, as you were saying, this made me really kind of sad just because I know there's a lot of women that are nervous because there is a time frame, right? There's like a biological clock, like you were saying, and they're like, I want kids and I'm already in my thirties. And, you know, by the time I find somebody and they feel, they feel really like they're running out of time. And I've, we've had, I would say like at our retreats often, like just women crying because they're like, I don't want to have to come back here. Like, I don't want to be here anymore because I just want to find my person and move on. Right. And so, and I know that, you know, some, some of them, maybe some people are not making it a priority or like early on. Right. And like, and this is why they're doing playing catch up, but there's some people that have been at this for so long, just never the timing or whatever, never connected with the right people. And, um, you know, I like, I would, I want to give them like a big hug just because I know that it's not easy. Like I want to, really acknowledge that it's it's hard i mean it's not even hard just within our faith community it's hard everywhere people are having a hard time finding partners mm-hmm. um if it wasn't their high school sweetheart or college sweetheart or something you know it's um you know now with, now with like remote work that's why the dating apps and all these things are a lot more popular now because people are having a hard time connecting organically to individuals and so it's uh yeah it's, it is it is tough so um, anyways, I just wanted yeah. to at least add that because I know there's going to be people yeah. going to be mm. feeling that they've been, they feel like they're doing everything that they can, which I think is awesome. Like, that's what I would say. You got to keep going and, and doing that. Those yeah. actions, every single action, I feel like makes a difference in getting you that much closer, keeping that energy and that, you know, the law of attraction come in your way is when you're focusing and putting your energy into that space. I think that's, that's what you have to do. So. Yeah. Yeah, That's an important acknowledgement. It's, it's really disheartening and discouraging when you try your best 
and it's not working, right? So what would you what would you say is, I guess, a helpful piece of advice for people that feel stuck? In yeah, yeah. So so I know there's a lot of okay. There's things that you feel comfortable doing, and there's some things that people don't feel comfortable doing, mm-hmm. right? And I think that that is, um, just humans like you know you'll you'll do what you feel comfortable i would encourage people and recommend to step a little bit out of your comfort zone whatever that looks like you know so yeah we have those websites people are like i don't like the websites for xyz reasons okay but by being on the website who knows you know and i've had even my own siblings i don't want to be on the website want to don't want to be on the website goes on the website within that week it's talking to a person Mm -hmm. months later match blessed like i mean you know okay so they do work you know they do work Mm -hmm. i don't like going to 24 plus retreats because you know people are whatever the reason why you know Mm -hmm. okay but give it a try you know you don't know you don't know it's like all it takes is one person we're not trying to build a whole soccer team or just you just need to find one good person you can build a life with right so it's like you don't know where they're going to be maybe it's not even the person like at 24 plus people are like, oh, they're um, sometimes they say like, well, similar faces, just a few, but I know a lot of them. It's like, okay, well, but the point is, is by you going to these retreats, you get to, they get to know you better, the girls and the guys. And it's all about networking. It's not just about that person might be at the retreat, but it's about what if they had a sibling or a cousin or a whatever, you know, like you don't know where the connections could be made, but you're, putting yourself out there. Um, some people are like, I don't want anybody to know my situation. So I don't want to have a matching team. I, I, I got this. It's like, mm-hmm. no, build your team. Uncomfortable. Right. Make, make it big. It doesn't have to be just one matching support. Like, Oh, my one matching supporter is not helping me. So what can I do? I I'm trying. It's like, well, no, build your team up big and get multiple people from different corners of the world. If you have to, you know, get out there, attend those workshops, staff, volunteer. I mean, it's incredible how many people come up to me when I went to, when I was in Korea, I was helping out with the blessing, just this past blessing. And it's incredible how many people came up to me and it's like, I know you. And I'm like, Mm -hmm. oh, okay. Like I thought maybe from 24 plus or something, you know, they're like, you were on the national family service. Like back when we were doing pandemic times, I was like, Oh yeah, I did do a few of those, you know, I was the MC for those programs, but yeah. people remember that. So even, you know, those that are more connected to the, you know, our faith did morning devotion. If you did a prayer or a, a song, you offered a song so much great exposure just from mm. being a part of that. Like I know people who got matched just from being, just from singing a song on, on the morning devotion. And people were like, who is that girl and guy, you know? So I think anything, and that might be scary for some people to be like, I don't want to do that. But it's like, okay, but sometimes it's what it takes, you know? Yeah. Yeah. There's a, there's a, there's a man who shall not be named. He's a, he's a tall, dark, sorry. He's a tall, not dark, (laughs) very white, bearded, handsome man that is, has been in the, in the spotlight in our movement for like, Ever. 15 years everyone knows who he is and uh, he's matched now but he comes to mind like you guys have no idea how many <laughs> how many people approached him um anywho uh yeah this is interesting it's like i can i can relate what you're saying to sexual integrity right and this applies for men and women it's not a, a male issue uh is that when i talk with people who are struggling with porn addiction masturbation and I ask them like, okay, well, the, well, first of all, they feel very defeated most of the times. Like I've been struggling for years and years and years, whatever. And so I ask them, okay, what what have you done, right, to to get better? And it's like, oh, well, I've tried, you know, watching videos online. <laughs> I've tried doing conditions, and then I always ask questions to challenge them. Like, okay, have you ever gotten software that can literally block porn on your on your computer and your devices? And they're like, no. I'm like, why not? It's like, well, I don't want to be that guy that depends on software. I'm like, you're saying you're frustrated, but you haven't even tried anything. Have you ever joined a program? No. Have you ever joined a high noon program? No. Have you, you know what I'm saying? Like this stuff is constant. And it's, 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 it's like, 
all it takes is perspective. And I can't tell you how many times people have referred to like one of our podcast episodes of, for example, Yoshie, Yoshie Manaka and her 10 year journey to find her match. Right. And I was talking with another sister who said she thought she had a really hard time finding someone until she listened to that podcast. And then she was like, holy crap. Like I've been just, <laughs> just whining and, and being, af- being afraid to take action. Right. And to actually put myself out there. And so when you have perspective on stuff of what really hard looks like, then you go, okay, this is, I haven't done enough. Like in der- terms of sexual integrity, it's like, I haven't done enough. I really haven't put my best foot forward. So it's actually unreasonable to conclude that this is really hard and it's not worth doing and to be defeated. Because until you've really tried absolutely everything that she's is talking about, absolutely everything to have sexual integrity, absolutely everything to succeed, then you're not allowed to say, this is too hard and I feel defeated because you haven't, right? And so I ask guys like, why don't you just get software? It'll literally block stuff on your phone. And if you ever do watch porn, it'll send an email to your accountability partner. Done deal. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It's like, well, I don't want, I don't want to be that guy. It's expensive. I'm like, my goodness. <laughs> yeah, you get my point. Yeah, no, I know I do. And I, I mean, in, in the space that we're talking about also with the matching and stuff, it's like people, I know... Anyways, and I feel bad because I know there are some people that are really feeling like they're doing everything. And I think that that's all you can do, right, is 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 putting yourself on all the things, all the platforms, building your team, connecting. I even really thank the people that I'm helping with because, you know, before when I didn't have all my kids, I was a lot more available, a lot more on top of it quick. And I feel like because I always felt like time is is very critical in this kind of stuff, like, you know, timing. So I was always trying to respond quickly, make sure I reach out to those families fast. Um, But I know now with three kids and just things get missed, right? Messages, emails, like I, I, I kid you not, I probably get a message every other day from parents or individuals that I'm helping. And so it's easy to kind of get it to not be on top of it as quickly. But whenever they get back to me, like those uh, individuals that I'm helping, like, hey, we're able to find out. I, I appreciate that. Like, I don't want them to think ever that I they're bothering me or whatever, because this is what I'm here for. And if I'm dropping the ball, I love that they text me and they they keep me on top of it because that means that they are being proactive. They're not just like, oh, I messaged her. So she'll get back to me and months go by later and nothing happened, right? Mm-hmm. It's like, no, they're messaging me. So I like to thank them every time being like, thank you for, for like, keep messaging me. And I tell them like, if I don't get back to you, message me because mm. it might've just got missed or lost, you know? Yeah. So just, but I think that that kind of being proactive is, is what's necessary too. Like even just that being annoying. I think that you're being annoying because you're, you want results because you want it to be different. You want to go out and, you know, move forward in the space, find your person. So I love that. I love that aggressiveness. Like, I mean, I talk to my husband all the time about this because back when it was 2009, it was me that approached him. Like I approached, okay, well, it was we, I approached him in 2000, we got blessed in 2009, 2008. But anyways, the point is, is that I approached him and I said, you know, would you have approached me if, you know, he's like, no, mm-hmm. I said, and it wasn't because he didn't like me. And that's a whole nother story. It, it's just, it's not in his character also. And he just more shyer in that area. But I was like, man, I don't, I wouldn't have the life I have now if I didn't stick my neck out a little bit. And especially as the girl, a lot of girls like to be the one being asked or, you know, approached, but it's okay to be, yeah, bold and, and put yourself out there in, in all the different ways, even if it's embarrassing. And, and, and honestly, if you can't do it because your personality type is really shy and your parents are maybe really shy or English is in their first language. Japanese, so like, you mean? Yeah, Japanese. Man, she's <laughs> then calling out our Japanese. You, you need to get that third party person involved that isn't afraid to make those calls and and to help you, right? And to and yeah. to before not just to feel like, oh, my parents, they're stuck and I'm stuck and here I am. And you know, like is you just opened up a floodgate of thousands of people to message you. <laughs> <laughs> just know. so you know <laughs> I'll mention, i'm having a baby in three weeks please keep in mind she's having a baby but also know she's open for business to help you guys <laughs> i mean it, that's why like anybody that's not that's maybe already married blessed 
and that's not a matching supporter, get involved. Honestly, there's so many people that need help, especially if you are the outgoing type and that can get things done. You know, people just need a team of, of people that can get things done. Like, yeah. Anyways, I've had so many conversations, even with guys from around the world, Switzerland and Netherlands and France. Like I've had so many conversations with different people because, you know, they'll be like, some girl will be like, can you find out about this guy in this country? Mm. I was like, okay. So I find him on Facebook and I just message them. Hey, I need to know some things about you. Can I just call you? It's just so easy. Yeah. Just they'll be like, sure. It's actually amazing how many times they'll tell me exactly what I need to know. Or they'll be like, sure, just call me. And I'll have a great conversation with them. And it's quick. And I can find out exactly what it is. So if you're that kind of person, be a matching supporter and just call people. Yeah. That's amazing. Do you have any, do you have any networks like that you communicate with all your matching candidates, like a group or a Facebook group or WhatsApp or anything like that? Uh, you know, that that's a good question. No, not, not okay. Other than people that attend 24 plus retreats, right? Like, sure. you know, but, but I don't have anything within my own group. It's mm. all individually. Um, but that is a good idea. I mean, I, I was do thinking, have yeah. Guess- to MatchNet and I know MatchNet is trying to I don't know if you what exactly we don't um, currently have a group uh thing where people can collaborate with each other and ask questions and you know just have access to matching supporters like you and and me so I was asking because I thought that might be cool like a like imagine a let's like a WhatsApp group where it's opt-in everyone there is you know serious trying to find people uh, really the high caliber matching candidates and they can ask questions to, to, to us. And, uh, anyways, it's, it's an idea. Cause I was thinking about like time wise, right? Like how many hundreds of people you're probably in communication with, right? Like constantly. (laughs) So it'd be nice to have a, a team effort where we could collaborate with a lot of different candidates and support them. Anyways, if you guys listening, think that's a cool idea and you would be down to join a, like an exclusive group, then let us know and we could have that be a place where you guys can feel free to ask questions or ask for recommendations or I don't know, get inspired, motivated. Yeah. Yeah. I I like that idea. I think, it, I think, yeah, if you have a team, you always feel more empowered. You feel like, okay, you're not alone. I think that that's one thing that we get a lot of feedback for, for 24 plus they, they're just more surprised. They, you know, especially people that, have been struggling on their own maybe, or just having a hard time feeling stuck or whatever the reason is, then they come and they see a lot of good people that are also looking and they don't feel alone. And I think that if there is a a group like that, people will feel supported and also just, yeah. yeah, group. yeah. I have a question. Something I admire about you a lot is that you are always thinking about people right? You're always thinking about trying to get people ultimately bashed and blessed, right? And you're trying to, as you said, proactively, like respond quickly and promptly. And and there's a time window, window of opportunity where you want to get things moving, rolling, right? And and that's admirable because I, I don't have that, <laughs> like to be totally, totally frank. So uh, on the other side of that, what do you think do you ever have experiences where you, where you feel like this person like needs to work more on themselves a little bit and is not really ready? And what are those what are those qualities that you feel like people are lacking generally? Oh man, I don't know. It's hard to say like qualities that they're lacking, but I do see it. And sometimes I'm just like, oh, you know, if you just just do like what? This, maybe like what like what? Okay, this is this is even. And I, and okay, I know it's all about the heart and your internal things like that. But, you know, for example, you go to a a virtual retreat, 24 plus, I keep saying 24 plus, that's where I'm seeing all of them either in person or on the screens, right? That's our sponsor, by the way. (laughs) Oh, 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 okay. No, no, I'm kidding. Jeez, no. (laughs) We don't do, we don't do sponsors. (laughs) I know, I can't be, I feel like I keep doing the plug for 24 plus. Um, But yeah, like even just appearance. Okay. Like I know it's good to work on yourself and your confidence and things like that. I really, I really think like, yeah, pick up those books, get confident because, you know, when it comes to 
um, both sides, uh, like girls and guys, people like confident people, people that are a little bit like nervous all the time. I think that kind of sends a different signal. I personally think a little bit more, you know, confidence, but even just appearance. And I hate, I hate making appearance like a thing, Mm. but I'm really surprised at how many times um, women and men are not putting their best foot forward. even just that, you know, I'm thinking you are in the presence of all these people that it's like you're on your first date. You want to put your best foot forward. It's not camp t-shirt, you know, just whatever it is. It's not a camp. It's we are, you're trying to attract the opposite person. And so it's like, even like little things like that make a big difference. And so I've even had some men that were like, I'm looking for a woman. I'm looking for somebody that like Mm -hmm. brings the real femininity side. I know you guys have had a podcast on that kind of stuff, but like someone that brings that and I will bring the masculinity and you know, I, I want someone that I feel like I could protect, you know, I think sometimes even women get into the space, like, okay, well, we got to be friends first. Right. So they act like almost like a bro. It's like, oh, yeah, but guys also, they don't, yeah, you could be your friend, but you don't have to be a bro. They can have their own bros, you know, like they, so some things like that, but, uh, but other than that though, there, there's also, um, more like internal things that I think that they could work on. Um, like you said, I mean, there's obviously those issues, addictions, right? And like sexual integrity and different other things that I think people need to really have clear because bringing that that kind of stuff into a relationship, I mean, it's hard. You can't. Yeah. Really and also finances, to get those in order, I think having a direction, people really appreciate people that have some kind of drive or direction and that's even for women. Even if you as as um, as a, a, a woman wants to eventually be maybe a stay-at-home mom. Okay, th- okay, this part, let me just kind of say this. It's so confusing. I've talked to men mm-hmm. that are like, I want women that have a goal and they're driven, that they don't have that they don't want to just be a stay-at-home mom and re- rely on me to do all that. Okay, I've got I've gotten that. But then I've got that same person being like, but I do want them to want to stay home with the kids and be a stay-at-home mom and like love doing like all that mom stuff too, because I think it's important for the kids to have a mom at home, something. Okay. So you want her. So let me get this straight. So you want her to want to be a stay-at-home mom, but tell you that she also has her goals and dreams and careers. So it's like, anyways, it's confusing, but I think men are, I think men are afraid of being the sole supporter for the family. That's scary for a lot of men. And yeah. so I think part of it comes from that. And that's just a fear. Yeah. I agree. I think if so I feel like if they think that, okay, if they have a, at least their partner has some kind of, you know, degree or some kind of goal, then in the, in the chance that they needed that extra support financially, they have their ducks in a row to be able to provide. Mm-hmm. And so I, get, I get, yeah. So, mm-hmm. and I think it's really important for women to share something to not just like, I want to be a stay at home mom. It's like, I mean, that's fine too. But if you also had some other drive in other things, I think that is more attractive too. Yeah. We were talking about this in the last episode with Kathy, and it's very feasible for men and women to, to have a flexible life now more than ever. Like you can be in any country in the world. This is not a uniquely American thing and live a very flexible life. If you're a little creative and you're willing to think outside the box and do the work. Like I recommend, especially for stay at home parents that they do that. But if they want to, they can also have a side thing that does produce, you know, passion and, and kind of feeds their convictions and is flexible. And if they make money with it, that's great. It's entirely possible. Uh, I think where it gets tricky is when people are working a corporate job, that's actually the line where if you cross that it's, it is significantly harder to work a corporate job and be a parent. And we've seen this, you know, but if you have like your own business, for example, as a stay at home parent, or if you have a part-time job, or if you have just a passion, like you like supporting people through matching as a matching supporter, right? Like how many hours do you spend on this every week? <laughs> Too many. Too many, right? <laughs> and that's like prime example is like, I'm passionate about this and I'm convicted in it and you spend your time doing it. And that's what you'd want to do. And also you're a mother of four coming on four kids, right? So it's like, that's that's uh, entirely possible um, to do that for the man and woman side, right? Yeah. Exactly. So, so, I mean, those are just some, you know, practical thing, like, you know, going back to your question of like, what are some things that 
people that are stuck could work on or what I've seen. It's like, those are some things I think are important to have some type of goal direction, you know, some financial stuff, especially if you're getting up into your thirties. Like if you're in your early twenties, you've got time, you're still maybe in school and, you know, but if you're in your thirties, especially, you know, this is where you're going to start thinking about family and things like that. It's good to have those financial goals. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I want to circle back to a point I made earlier. I said that if you're over 24 and if you haven't thought about marriage and relationships at all, I think something's off. All right. And I know that might be feel, make people feel judged or misunderstood. And I understand that. And I think if you feel that, then that's an opportunity to really evaluate things. I really do believe this and I'll stand by it. If someone is older in their twenties, mid twenties or older, and they haven't considered this or made any steps towards, does that make sense? Like they haven't even like looked into what it might look like to get matched, to get blessed, what that means to them. What does the blessing mean to them? There's something that's off in terms of priorities, right? There's something that's like, they could definitely benefit from more thinking long-term instead of just like, what am I focusing on right now this year, year by year, but really long-term, what do I want in decades from now? So I'm just saying that just to kind of clarify what I meant by that, because I know I said it in a way because I wanted people to stop and be like, did he just say that? <laughs> I like saying stuff like that because it makes people think and it challenges their their mental process. All right. So just putting out there. Chizka, I have a last question for you about um, kind of the point you were making about presenting yourself, right? As a man or a woman, as a woman, what would you say are like the top three things that a man can work on that would make them 80%, like, like 80% there in terms of like attractiveness or I don't want to use that word. That's a stupid word. Like marriageability. Let's use that word that would make someone marriageable and it can be related to external or internal or financial or anything like that. Oh, I mean, I think, uh, maybe, oh man, that's, that, that's so hard too. I mean, I think for men, you know, your heart really goes a long ways. You know, maybe some guys will, you know, I don't know if they compare, you know, like, oh, I'm not as good looking as this guy or I don't make as much money as this guy or whatever. But I think um, just putting, just having a really good, kind heart. So many girls in their matching profiles are like, I'm looking for a kind, someone who's kind, someone who loves their parents or like loves family, like wants You know, I think that's a good telling how their relationship is with their parents and with their siblings and their family members. I think that's a good, uh, Mm. that's something that if you don't have that as a guy, um, I'm not saying it's a red flag because I know there's a lot of families that have a lot of different situations and I get that. Um, But I think just how how, how they are with their relationships with friends and things like that is like something that's really attractive. Um, Obviously, if they look, nice like they're making some kind of effort you know being active maybe depending on the type of girl or having some kind of skill in some way or okay fun. when you say attractive do you mean face or body more uh okay generally speaking not you like you know what i mean generally no, speaking. i know no I, I i think i think both like i think a, like looking nice i mean it's so funny how many people for example on these even virtual retreats will be like slouched over on their couch and like, like I'm thinking. Mm. Okay. To, overall. Right. Yeah. I think, um, but I, I know, I know. Um, and I, cause I was listening to your podcast earlier when Kathy was kind of mentioning about even just for me, I know for me or for general, like having some type of faith, right? Like, I mean, this is a faith community that, you know, you don't have, you don't have to have, um, the level of faith as your part, everyone's going to have a different stance on this kind of stuff. But I think having some type of spiritual something, you know, okay. I just feel having your own passion or own thoughts and opinions about something is so important. Like you, you know, we were just talking about goals. I think like having some kind of goal drive, um, clear stance on maybe your own faith or your own where where you're at with stuff. I think a lot of girls like that groundedness of what that is, whatever that is, you know, may they may not agree with it, you know, but I think you having 
your own ideas, not just, you know, what about this? I don't know. (laughs) What about this? I'm not sure. I don't know. I'm not sure. I'm not, no. You know, I think there's, that is, that could be pretty attractive, just being a lot more clear with, and it could be, you know, even if faith is like, you're being really honest, like, I don't really know what I believe right now. Mm. Okay. Like, that's really, that's clear. You're, you're still trying to figure that out, but you're like, I'm not, you know, I'm not really sure. And I'm working towards something. I think, I think that's another thing. I think a lot of girls really appreciate people seeking growth you know, in different areas. So if you're, you know, and that could be growth with finances, but it could be growth in faith, it could be growth in, in your own self or your skills. I think growth is a big one. Mm-hmm. I'm trying to think, I'm like, I'd like, when you have questions on the spot, I'm like, oh man, I wish I would have prepared earlier. Like, you know. Well, we like- can always do another episode later at a later time. <laughs> but, After yeah. baby is settled a little bit. All right. And if people have questions for you, then we can go into that more. Uh, yeah attractiveness yeah we've never really talked about this like in a really practical <clears throat> day-to-day way um we're very and I know I'm missing stuff and I know that I'm I, I I feel like just thinking back of my answers I'm like oh am I sounding too external but it's you know especially and I keep saying 24 plus but in those kind of platforms you don't they look at that first right like they mm. you'll see your profile picture first and then read the stuff and and which is, I wish it was um, not always like that because sometimes I'm like, oh, but this guy or gal, like if you got to know them, like, like what a gem, you know, mm-hmm. but obviously there's certain things that they see right off the bat mm-hmm. first and, you know, that's why, but anyways, my, I think that one word um, is growth. I think one of the first things that I should have said in the beginning is mm-hmm. when you ask that question is, I think what makes even guys or girls attractive is I think people appreciate people that are, are growing in whatever area or proving mm. themselves and um, making those kind of action steps right. to be better. So cool. sounds like the moral of this story is that you should consider everyone uniquely and not just on appearance, right? Of course, appearance and external things are kind of like a, like a gateway or a sign, like a for sale sign for a house but you don't really know the house until you walk in and check it out, you know, get to know the house. So on the, on the people as, as viewers of people, we should be open to everyone as a unique child of God, but as the first people being viewed, we should perceive and assume that people do, people do prioritize external things, right? That's a reality. That's the world we live in. And so it's helpful perhaps to have both of those approaches to things, right? Anyway, she's, God bless you. Thank you for your time. We are going to encourage you guys to check out the MatchNet program at matchnet.us to wrap up here. And uh, let us know if you like this episode and we'll do more of it. And also let us know if you want to do that group thing where we get together and you guys can ask questions and collaborate uh, about matching process. All right. All right. Thank God you. bless. Thank you, Shiska. Bye-bye.